Welcome to Principal Component Analysis. In this video, we'll go over the algorithm for Principal Component Analysis Dimensionality Reduction. To start off, let's understand the goals. The first goal of PCA is to find directions in input space that explain variations in data. The word variations in data is very important to know. And we'll explore more details as we go along. If you see the picture below, we have shown the data points in plus sign. And what we're interested in is to find the directions PC1 and PC2 that are shown in the picture if we were to do it for two dimensional. The second goal is to ensure these directions are orthogonal to each other. And put it another way, we want to have no correlation or very low correlation between the directions. The next goal is we want to transform our data using PCA's directions. This is called projection. And we use these new projections to represent our original data. The last goal is we want to have minimum reconstruction error, meaning when we transform projections back to original data, we want to have minimum error. Now that we've seen the goals, let's look at the algorithm in detail. Given a data matrix X of N rows and M columns, the first step is data normalization. There are multiple approaches for doing data normalization. One is a row by row difference, or you could subtract the mean from each row of X. Typically, the option one is done in time series data, like financial time series. And the option two is more popular in various other fields. The output of recentering, which is the option two, is to recenter the data by subtracting mean from each row. And the output of such transformation is a N by M matrix. And this is the most preferred option in the industry. The below code snippet that is written down is actually using option one for normalization and is written in VBA. It's not Python or our MATLAB, but in VBA. We shall use VBA throughout this video to illustrate how to do it from scratch without any fancy packages or imports. Okay. The next step is covariance computation. If XC is the output from step one, which is the normalized matrix, then the covariance matrix sigma is a dot product of XC with the transpose of itself and is normalized by the count of the rows. And the output of this is the sigma, which is the covariance matrix. To get some more intuition for a two-dimensional data, it would be this type of formula, where you're multiplying the product of mean adjusted data points and dividing it by n minus one. As an example, if we have three dimensions, x, y, and z, then covariance matrix would be a three by three matrix. And it is worth seeing here that we have taken a pairwise covariance calculation for each element when building this matrix. And the diagonal elements of this particular matrix is nothing but the variance of the data series X, Y, and Z respectively. The code shown here is having a loop to form the covariance matrix, since at each time we calculate covariance matrix between two data, data series, as we have just discussed. The next step is to compute eigenvalue and eigenvectors. There are a number of approaches for doing this, and we are going to be using Jacobi method for calculation, which is quite popular within the applied finance and quant space. Let's start knowing that A is the input covariance matrix for which we want to calculate eigenvectors and values. We initialize Z to zero, which is gonna keep track of the number of iterations. And also we prepare a unit matrix EIJ, which is the output where we're gonna store all the eigenvectors. 
we start with the loop and we have four sub steps within the loop the first sub step is to get rotation theta for the a matrix here we are taking an arc tangent of a number and before understanding that particular equation let's understand what is k and l here k and l are referring to the largest two diagonal elements within the input covariance matrix which is actually indicating the two largest variance dimensions in the data to calculate the rotated theta we calculate the arc tangent or the ratio of a of k comma l divided by the difference in variance between the two largest variance dimensions okay the next step is to do a unit transformation which is also called unit rotation matrix which is a 2 by 2 matrix composed of cos and sine transformation of the rotation theta matrix so what we do here is for the diagonal elements we have taken a cos transformation and for non diagonal elements we have taken a sine transformation okay the next sub step is to prepare the Eigen matrix itself by doing a matrix multiplication between the earlier found Eigen matrix which is unit in case of the first iteration and the unit rotation matrix which we found in this step 2 or the sub step 2 we also adjust the A the original matrix by doing a matrix multiplication between the unit rotation matrix and the previous version of the last known A matrix. The sub step four is we continue this loop till max iteration count is reached or the diagonal sum of the Eigen matrix is above a particular threshold. Okay. So those are the four steps, sub steps which we run in the loop to compute eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Now to give you a flavor of the implementation for your reference for the sub step 1 and sub step 2 which are doing the rotation theta and the unit rotation matrix I've given you the code the important thing to note in this code is the input matrix S mat is the covariance matrix. Also, for your reference, I've given an implementation of how to prepare Eigen matrix E and do the iteration, which were the sub step 3 and 4 in this code module. Again, the function is taking S mat, which is the original covariance matrix as an input to this function okay once we have found the eigenvectors and eigenvalues from the above steps the next step is to find principal components principal components refer to the k eigenvectors that have the largest eigenvalues so to repeat principal components refer to the k eigenvectors that have the largest Eigen values. Let's look at an example to understand this better. We have plotted Eigen value percentages in the y axis, and the x plots the Eigen value count or the dimensions count. The Eigen value percentage is calculated at each Eigen value divided by the total sum of Eigen value and the eigenvalue percentage which we have plotted in y-axis is also interpreted as the total percentage variance explained by the given eigen okay now what this chart indicates is the first eigenvalue explains 35 percent of variance in the data the second explains 13 percent of variance in the data the third eigen value explains 11 percent of variance in the data etc 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 and cumulatively, if we take the first three eigenvalues, they explain 59% of the data. And if we take first seven, five eigenvalues, they explain 75% of the data. 
And if we take first six eigenvalues, that explains 81% of the data. So top of each bar is showing the cumulative variance explained. Okay. Suppose we want to do a dimensionality reduction using PCA, and we want to have at least 80% of the variance explained after the reduction. Then we will have to choose up to six dimensions, or k is equal to six. Since 81% of variance is explained when k is equal to six. Now that we found k is equal to six in our case, what we have to do is we, have, we are going to be forming a new matrix U, which we assemble using the first six eigenvectors. So k is equal to six. M is referring to the number of data points, net data rows. U is a matrix of size M by K. Okay. The last step in PCA is to project using principal components that we have just calculated. The transformation we use is a linear transformation of the form Z equal to U transpose X where u is the principal component matrix we made in step four, and x is the input matrix. Intuitively, we are actually forming z1 to zk dimensions, with each feature of our input matrix being weighted by the principal component. Example, if we have two-dimensional data for which we have one-dimensional PCA, then we can project into the one-dimensional Z1 using this linear transformation. Finally, it is worth noting that the Z matrix is now our representation of the original data in PCA projections or the PCA projected direction. Okay, so those were the five key steps for PCA computation. On a related note, I do recommend you review another popular dimensionality reduction technique named T-Stochastic Nearest Neighbor. If you haven't seen it, check out my video on the same. Well, that's all for today. Till next video, good luck to you.